Hi guys, I'd like to show you a project that I've been working on. This is Kerbal X and it's a craft sharing site which is able to detect the mods that craft use. So you can then search for craft by mod and by other characteristics. So um, say you wanted a stock probe from the VAB, you can hit stock, VAB and probe. Or maybe you want a mod aircraft or modded aircraft with and space planes. But the the main search power is being able to actually search by specific mod. So we open up this mod filters section and then let's search for a craft that has B9 aerospace. So let's come back with seven craft all of which have at least one part from B9. Um, let's also add CAS into that as well. Now we've got three craft that have at least one CAS and B9 part. Let's limit that to VAB craft. Um, so if we go and look at one of these, on each craft you get, if it's a mod craft, you get an automatically generated mod list with a count of the number of different parts from each mod. Um, on all craft you get a set of basic info which says um, what its part count is, what its root part is, a uh, number of stages it has and also it lists the resources that it found in the craft file. Um, there's a section for action groups um, you have to enter the action groups manually unless the craft has a B9 info drive, in which case it can read the data from the info drive and populate this automatically. So this one, the action groups have come from the B9 info drive. And then you can change that later yourself as well. So let's go back and we'll do a different search. Um, I'm going to clear B9 and CAS and turn the VAB filter off and let's search for a craft that has remote tech. Now say you were just getting into remote tech and you wanted a craft that had only remote tech and stock parts and not a whole bunch of other mods. So these all have quite a few other mods with them. Um, but we just want remote tech. So we're going to click add stock parts. So it's added NASA mission and squad. The site treats the stock parts basically as if they were mods and treats NASA mission and squad as separate things. So you can um, be more specific with your filters. With the include selected mods on, it's come back with a craft that has at least one part from each of these. But it's also this craft has seven mods on it. We just want remote tech and the original stock parts. So I'm going to get rid of NASA mission and then I'm going to switch this only filter on. The only filter is like the include in that the craft has to have at least one part from the selected mods, but unlike the include, it can't have any other mods. So this craft has just got the original squad parts, the original stock parts, sorry, and remote tech too. There's another way to filter by mods, and that is using this with selected mods. Now what this will do is it'll find craft that are compatible with the selected mods. So if we switch this on, then what it's come back with is craft that would work if you just had these installed there. Let's chuck NASA mission in there as well. So um, if you just had remote tech on top of the base game, then these craft would be compatible. But what it's actually come back with is mostly pure stock craft. So let's filter out the pure stock by switching the mod filter on. And now we've got the one modded craft that would work if you had just remote tech installed. 
So the idea of the width filter is you put in the mods that you have installed and it'll find you craft that will work with your setup. So let's say you just had remote tech, space plane and curb paint installed. It'll come back with these craft which will load up in a game that has these installed. Another way to select the mods to put into this list, um, you can type things in here, but um, that's great if you know exactly what you're looking for. Um, for a more browsing interface, you can open this mod selector. Um, so I'm just going to clear these off for a minute. So with the mod selector open, you can select the set of mods that you want. I'll have space plane, let's have um, Nova Punch, let's have KW, Mech Jeb, Tweak Scale, ScanSat, CAS, Remote Tech, B9, Procedural Dynamics, Paint, Keythane. Um, so that's kind of my simple mod setup, not my horrific mod setup. Um, then you can click anywhere and the mod selector goes away. So if we had this little lot installed, then it's come back with craft that will work with that setup. Oh yes, and you can also filter by subassembly. So if you just wanted subassemblies, switch that on and you've got something that has that is a sub-assembly and works with all of these. Or if you don't want sub-assemblies, switch craft on. Okay, so to upload your craft, you need to be signed in, and then you can click Upload Craft. Get your craft file and drop it on there. Once it's uploaded, it will tell you about the mods and parts that it found and if it's failed to detect one of the parts, if it doesn't recognize one of the parts it'll tell you that here and I will explain how you can then help improve the knowledge base so it does detect those parts, I'll explain that later. Then you can select if it's a sub-assembly or leave it on craft and set the class, so this is an aircraft and you can set the action groups um, this one has a B9 info drive, so it's got this info from the info drive, and I'm going to take that off and put it on here. Hit update. Then you need to put at least one picture, and so I'm going to go to Imga. Here's some I uploaded earlier. From Imga, you want to select the direct link format. Um, from anywhere else you want the link that ends with the file extension. So I'm going to copy all of those and paste them in. Um, put each one on a new line or with a space separating. If you have a video you can put the URL for that in there and then you can set some hashtags. So I'm going to say this is a six man and crew transport. It will also suggest commonly used hashtags as you type, but those don't apply. Then hit next and it will have created the page for you. It'll lay the page out depending on how many pictures you gave it. Um, you can choose from a number of different preset templates, so uh, basic 2 has a layout like this with the details down here and the rest of the pictures at the bottom, or layout 1. You can now customize this as you like. Uh, you can move or remove and add in these little containers that contain either text, pictures or videos and you can obviously edit the text. The text supports most of the BB code syntax that you use on the forum 
and it also supports GitHub's Markdown and my own Markdown, which I'm calling Curbdown, uh, that does it, that brings information from the craft file. So if we look at these two, that's GitHub Markdown syntax for a heading, and you can change the size of the heading by the number of hashes in front of it. And then square brackets with details inside brings the basic details, and square brackets with mods will bring the mod list. There's quite a few other things you can do with curb down syntax. Um, so in this one, we've got description that brings the description text from the craft file. And then this little sentence is made up with attributes from the craft file. So when that comes out, it says a little bit about it. Um, all the craft get this sentence just stuck in there. You can just get rid of it if you don't want it. Um, so actually, I don't think I want the description from the craft file. So I'm going to take that out. I'm going to say, Oh, so you can you can click Markdown Help, and that will show you um, the different keywords that you can use, and it also shows you how to add links in both the GitHub and the forum style. Uh, so that's a GitHub style link. That's forum style. Images are a bit different to how you do it on the forum. The idea is to get rid of having to have lots of square brackets and backslashes to close tags so you just have open square bracket image colon followed by the URL and close it with a single square bracket same for videos you can add them like that or you can just put the ID of the video in after the colon and then it also shows you how to do the different headings in github style and the other style syntax which supports both GitHub and bulletin board style markup. Okay, so I'm just going to change this to say a very in italics fast craft 317 meters a second at sea level. And click out and it updates. Um, I also want to change the layout of this page. I don't want this, so I can just hit remove on that, get rid of that. Um, I'm going to move this so it goes down below description. Uh, let's make this image bigger. Uh, let's make that one size smaller and make these two bigger. And then this is a section that was added in automatically by the template, but you can you can force these containers to sit on a new line by putting dot new underscore line in them. I don't want that one though, so I'm going to remove that. Let's shrink the image down and move the mod list onto the other side. And then we can click view up here, and it's forgotten about the image size. So we can go back and hit edit. There does seem to be a slight bug about remembering the sizes of the images when you um, when it saves. It's remembered at this time. So this is still a work in progress, um, and I definitely welcome any feedback about how intuitive or infuriating this editing interface is. The idea is to make it so you can do a layout like this very simply without having to mess around with creating tables in BB code syntax which is, well it just looks messy to edit. Um, so this is very easy to just create three containers like this, set their size and set which ones, set their order. Um, you can also add in another container by clicking these add links. It'll add it to the right of wherever you click add. So if we click that, then it's added an empty container in here. 
and in this one I'm going to use another magic keyword which is DL link. So we click that, then we've got a download link, and you can also say DL link plus, and it'll make it a big centered download link. And then let's stretch that across the width of the page so it's centered. And then down the bottom, you can change the class hashtags and edit the action groups as well. If your craft is missing, if it hasn't detected all the parts on the craft, there will be a section here which says which parts are missing and also how to then deal with that. Okay, so I'm hit view. So this is how it appears to everyone. The hashtags are up at the top along with its um, let's say model stock and what its class is, what building it came from. And of course the mod list details and action groups. And there it is on the search at the front because it's sorted by date. So the site can only identify mods and parts that it knows about. Um, so if we go and look at this craft for example, it's got a red marker at the top. And if you click that it takes you down to this note which says that it's got some unrecognized parts on it and it's got three parts that are not in the knowledge base so if you upload a craft and you find that it's not detected all of the parts on it then what you need to do is to upload your part map and the part map is basically just a list of all the parts you have installed and which mods they belong to and you generate the part map using this part mapper tool. So download the part mapper and download a authentication token which will authenticate your upload with the site and also associate it with your account. And so let's go and get that and I'll go into my KSP folder. So this is the set of mods I've got installed in this KSP. Um, so we get the part mapper and you can just put the XE in there. If you want it to ignore some mods, i.e. if you're a developer and you don't want mods that are in progress or things that you've customized to go up, you can just add them in under here. So if we put in squad then it would ignore squad but obviously we don't want to do that put your authentication token in there as well and then run the part mapper so it scans all of the parts it's discovered 979 parts and then it'll send up the information about each mod now in this case I've already uploaded my part map for this install so it's saying that my information hasn't changed so it's not doing anything um, when you upload a part map that you've not done before it'll tell you what impact that has had on the knowledge base so that just runs through and when it completes it'll actually close it stays open for a minute so you can look back over the log and that's that so once that's done, then you have improved the knowledge base and it'll know about more parts and mods. So if I go to my profile, then there's a section that shows my contributions to the knowledge base. On people's profiles, you also get a list of the mods that they've built craft with and their most recently uploaded and most commonly downloaded craft and you can also go and see just a particular user's craft and do the same sort of searches but just limited to a particular user's craft. You can also see a full set of mods that the site knows about here. So it knows about 99 mods at the moment. Um, the knowledge base was reset 
a couple of days ago after its initial trial run and a few bugs being discovered and cleaned out so it doesn't know about many mods at the moment um, but the more part maps that people upload the richer the knowledge base will get so you can search for mods and if you click on a mod it'll show you what craft have parts from that mod and it'll also show you a list of the parts for it you can also go and view all the parts that are installed so it knows about 2070 parts at the moment um, this can be quite useful if you're trying to find out where a part belongs to someone on the forum the other day was asking where um, Curb Pro came from so I just bashed Curb Pro in there and there it is, it's from Hull Camera VDS uh, you can also hunt for users and you can see who's online people who've got little green triangles have uploaded um, part maps to the knowledge base um, and we can do a search for users so you can find specific people and find their craft so that's kind of it um, it's very much a work in progress still um, there's a lot more that I want to add in um, so on the mods I want to add in the ability for people to put um, links for for downloads and forum threads so the idea is to get a sort of community driven knowledge base about which parts and mods exist in the world and start plugging it into where they actually can get those parts and mods um, I want to direct as much traffic as possible towards um, Kerbal stuff and yeah that's kind of it really oh yeah one very very important feature is the little rocket at the bottom which will uh, take off and land as you scroll up or down the page once you've clicked on it uh, once you've clicked on it as well if you click on it again it'll zoom you up to the top of the page I think come back down again when you when you start scrolling uh, yeah so that's a that's a real key feature there um, Keep an eye on the version number. I'm constantly updating this. There's a lot to add. Um, really appreciate any feedback from you guys. Um, if you go to the about section, which is a whole big pile of TLDR, um, there's a link to the forum thread if you want to come and ask questions or suggest anything, or to the GitHub issue tracker if you found a problem and you need to tell me. Um, and yeah, so I hope you guys will start using this and thank you for watching.